All right. So uh, welcome, everyone. This is our first info session about the Paradise Environmental Arts Residency at Paradise Nature Center. My name is Jess Lamar Reese Holler. I am on the board at Paradise Nature Center since 2019, and I run the Paradise Environmental Arts Residency, which is the first and only paid artist residency in Marion and Morrow County, uh, serving artists in Marion and Morrow County. We're pretty proud of it. It's the second year of the program. So I'm just going to talk briefly, um, quite briefly about Paradise, where we are and what we do, what the residency is. And then the second half of the session is really just going to be showing whoever ends up joining the call. If it's just uh, you guys will have a more intimate session. And for folks watching the recording, uh, I will talk you guys through what the application looks like, what we're looking for, and then answer any questions. Sounds good? Yep. Uh, that means you guys have questions. So um, a little bit about, oh, that's the wrong one, a little bit about Paradise Nature Center. So we are a five plus acre nature preserve along the Olentangy River. We call it the Whetstone locally here in Caledonia, outside of Caledonia on Whetstone River Road North. I'll get into this more in a minute, but uh, Paradise is the historic home of Trella and Ray Romine. They were pioneering naturalists, conservationists, also artists and historians who moved uh, to Paradise in 1953 and built a house there. And Paradise became a 501c3 nonprofit in 2018, about five years after Trella Romine passed away. It was founded by her son, David Haldeman, who's still very involved with Paradise. He's our treasurer now. And he really wanted to um, fulfill the spirit and wishes of his mother, Trella, and his stepdad, Ray, and open the property to everyone in the community. So Paradise is a is open dawn to dusk, 365 days a year. Uh, not a lot of people know it's there. It's really beautiful. So we welcome you guys out. We are across the river from the Paradise Nature Preserve, which is actually different. Uh, Trella gave... Um, Another several acres across the river to the Marion County Parks District actually helped found that while she was still living. And so that land on the far side of the river from Whetstone River Road is the Paradise Nature Preserve. And then the land that is on Whetstone River Road with our um, historic Romine residence house is Paradise Nature Center. You can explore it all together, but um, it just kind of matters for what you put in a Google Maps. If you put preserve, you'll end up on the other side of the river. If you put nature center, you'll, you'll end up uh, at our house um, and at our nature center. And our mission is to inform our communities in their natural and their cultural history and heritage, which is really cool that we do both environmental stuff and we do arts and culture, kind of unusual for a nature center. And I apologize, I'm like blending into my background here because it's dark and the light is funny. Um, and just wanted to reiterate again, we are open to the community. You don't have to have an invite. We are like a regular park uh, and nature preserve. We just happen to have a house, which I'll get into more in a minute, that um, is rentable on Airbnb. And we have lots of awesome programs, arts events, all of that. So um, historically, this land that is now Teradis was very important to indigenous communities. It was used for hunting. The Cocosing or Owl Creek Trail crossed very close to the property. And it was also very popular in Caledonia as a fishing hole um, up until the 50s. It was purchased by Trella and Ray Romine in 1952. Trella, who is on the left here, had a dream of having a house on a hill by a river in a woods. And this beautiful property fulfilled her dream. Uh, she was married to Ray Romine, who was called the postman poet. He actually was a postal carrier in Marion, and he wrote hundreds and hundreds of poems on his routes that were published in all of the popular magazines of the time in the 1930s and 1940s. So very cool, very artistic people. Uh, Ray tragically passed away in 1954, right after they built their house. Um, but Trella went on uh, to kickstart a lot of really important movements in Marion County, including the local history movement. She was one of the founders of the Marion County Historical Society and the movement to protect prairies across Marion County, uh, Crawford County and Wyandotte County. We have a formation called the Sandusky Plains. Very rare, these open prairies that had um, oak trees in them. And she found where those prairies were left along the railway, uh, protected them, helped save the prairie seeds and the species. And so she did a lot for the environmental movement. Um, very, very cool people. And so we just want people to understand some of that history and who our founders were. It's not just any random nature center. It's a place that's been important in this history for a long time. And uh, we do a lot of programming at Paradise. Uh, and like I said earlier, we're kind of unusual. We have a niche that's kind of between 
environmental programming and arts and culture programming. We're not just an art center. We're not just a nature center. We do both. Uh, so we have environmental programming, such as school programs, uh, teaching kids to come out and learn about the river. We have a hands-on conservation series. Every spring, the whole community can come out and help us restore a, a prairie that we're working on across the street from Teradice. We also offer visits to Teradice. Our historic 1950s home, the Romine Residence, is for rent on Airbnb. It is booked almost every night. It is very, very popular. And it's also rentable for board meetings during the day. We also have families like you guys from here in the county who just might want to come for a vacation or a nature retreat. It's a gorgeous uh, 1950s house with beautiful windows overlooking the river and access to the whole property. We also have a Romine Legacy Committee. And what we do is we, oh, I think I lost you guys. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll wait a second and see if anyone comes back. <laughs> Can you hear us, Ashley? Yeah, but I, sorry. I my audience, no, you're fine. I didn't wanna uh, keep performing for the video <laughs> if you guys weren't there though. You want me to keep going? Yeah, you're good. I can't see you, but I, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Do you want me to uh, do you want me to do something so you guys can see the slides or can you see it now? Uh, it's slowly coming up. Our internet is really bad. <laughs> we, I hear you on that. We've we've got some stuff we've done in our application this year to hopefully account for that because we know a lot of internet's not uh, great around the county. Um, so yeah, we we have a committee that does stuff to honor and um, amplify the work that Trella and Ray did. We have a new exhibit that's going to be coming out this spring. Uh, and we also have a lot of work we've done to digitize all of Trella Romine's diaries that she kept through her whole life and um, working on publishing a lot of the old manuscript poems of Ray Romine. So a lot of that's on our website. Highly recommend you check it out. And then we have arts and culture programming. So we have this artist residency. That's what we're going to talk about for the rest of today. And we have a Tunes at Teradice concert series that's held each August. We had three performances this August. One of them was canceled due to rain, but we really love to do music, arts, and culture programming. And our big goal, we are working on building an interpretive center uh, for Teradice Nature Center. It's gonna be Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, kind of falling water style, cantilevered out over the river. So we're fundraising for that and building plans now, and hopefully we'll have that soon. Um, the biggest thing we've done in the last year, besides our artist residencies, we just built a new stage um, overlooking our pond. It's super beautiful. I don't know if I have pictures of it in here, but um, on our website, it's really awesome. So why everyone's here today. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our Teradice Environmental Arts Residency. We call it TEAR or TEAR. Both of those things sound really sad. <laughs> That's just a shorter way to say it. Uh, what it is, is it's a paid artist residency open to artists living in, working in, or from Marion and Morrow County. We interpret that really broadly. Um, so however you define having a relationship to those two counties, we'd love to see an application from you. It's non-residential. A lot of artist residencies are like, you know, come to Utah, we have a cabin for you, you can live here and make art for a month, um, but they might not include a payment. Our residencies are really intended for artists who are here in Marion and Morrow County and who may not have had the paid chance to work on creating new original artwork. So um, we don't ask you to stay here. Our house is actually usually rented um, and our artists already live here. So instead we just ask our artists to visit Teradice three times during the month of their residency. That can include walking the trails, uh, hanging out, but we really want our artists to create, uh, to pitch a project to us and to create new artwork. Gonna wait for a second here. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> oh, Lordy, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Thanks for being here. I'm here for whoever is here. <laughs> so, so we'll work with whatever you've got. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, long long story short, <laughs> you guys can hear me. We we just want our artists to create a project that lets them create new artwork that's just in some way inspired by Teradice. That could be inspired by our land and coming to explore the property and the river. We're right on the Whetstone River. Uh, that could be creating artwork that's inspired by our history, our mission, or our legacy. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about our artists from last year, but we had artists who created original songs uh, that they wrote about uh, the history of Teradice and about Trell and Ray, uh, an amazing uh, performer, Steve. 
did a beautiful song. We'll hang out for another minute here since I know they're having internet trouble, which I hate. Hey guys, can I do anything to reduce your bandwidth? I don't think so. You guys are welcome. If you if you can see me in the slides, you can keep your camera off and that might make it less intense for your internet. Sometimes that helps. I often usually, if I'm not presenting, I have my camera off because if you have yours on, that's gonna suck a little bit more of your bandwidth, I think. But can you see, can you see the slides at all? Uh, not yet, it's no. still. Well, I can send them afterwards too. Is that easier? Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Cool. Okay. Stop video. Well, that's true. If you stop your the video, offer, well, that's her. Yeah. No, no, no. That should uh that should stop your video so it's not as intense. I think I lost you guys again. <laughs> I, yeah. Did it? Did that send you away? So yeah, I see you guys now. But if you say stop video, then I can't see you, which is I I love seeing you, but I don't need to. It it that might be easier for your internet. But can you see all of this now? I can. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And this this will be quick, and then I'll stop sharing screen. It'll be a little easier. Um. But yeah, basically we ask our artists to just create new work in whatever their genre is, whether that's painting, whether that's folk dancing, whether that's hip hop or songwriting or photography, poetry, uh, baking, uh, inspired by Teradice in some way. And then the only other thing we ask our artists is we'll have two artists a month for our residency. And we want our artists to collaborate with us and the other artists from that month and to create a public program of some sort. It could be a talk, a gallery event, a workshop, a performance, a reading and an activity. Um, I'll give some examples of what the artists did last year. Um, sometimes they each did their own thing, but it was within like that two hour public program. But we really just wanna showcase you guys' as art uh, to the rest of the community. Can you still hear me? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so, and then uh, we do have a stipend for our artists, which is awesome. This is all about supporting artists to have the time to do and make whatever they want. So we have a grant from the Ohio Arts Council, super awesome. They are so generous in supporting this. And uh, each artist will get a stipend of $1,000 to support their work over the course of the month. And we pay that out on that last day during the public performance and uh, works well for everyone. We may have small stipends available for materials as well. If we do, it will be um, under $100. That would be on a reimbursement basis. And um, our grant will allow us to provide residencies to eight artists in 2023. And we're gonna run our residencies from March to June. So that means we're going to pick two artists for March, two for April, two for May, and two for June. And um, like I mentioned, uh, we are open to artists in all genres. Uh, that means folk arts, traditional arts, music, fine arts, performance arts, uh, writing. Uh, we had an artist who, sorry, my dog's uh, coughing here in the background. I'm hoping she's okay. Um, we had an artist last year who is a fly fish tire who did traditional outdoorsmanship and is a, is a fly fisherman and um, did an amazing workshop on how to tie flies for fly fishing. We've had wood carvers apply. We've had uh, bakers and foodways artists apply. So we really are open to a very wide range of arts, even beyond uh, what a lot of residencies look for, which might be the traditional fine arts, you know, painting, pastel, drawing, photography, media arts, video, um, music, all of that um, is stuff that we are open to. And we are especially seeking artists from marginalized backgrounds or communities who have not had the chance to have uh, paid opportunities to develop their artwork. That includes Black artists, artists of color, immigrant and new color, newcomer artists. That includes artists with disabilities, youth artists um, under 18, artists over 65 who might be elders in their community. Um, there's a wide range of artists who have not had a lot of institutional support uh, to develop the art that they do. And we really like to think that our residency is, is a chance for those artists. So we're not just looking for working professional artists who have had tons of gallery shows and went to art school. We're really looking for community artists with talent and passion who want a chance and could really thrive 
having a thousand dollars and a dedicated month, in addition to working, school, the other things they're doing in their life, to focus on their art. And that's really special to us. We are the only artist residency in Marion and Morrow County, and we are the only paid artist residency in the North Central Ohio region. Uh, so this is a kind of rare thing that we're really proud to offer. We've got a beautiful space and uh, we really like to think it's something nourishing and relaxing and good for our artists too, so they can develop new work uh, and have that time that they might not have otherwise. And um, like I said, uh, the Teradice Environmental Arts Residency is supported by the Ohio Arts Cran uh, Council uh, by a grant called Arts Next. So we're really grateful uh, to that for making this possible. Um, just a couple quick things, then I'll show you guys a website and answer questions. Um, the application is available online. We have a really convenient web form. And we ask that artists, if they can, use that web form. It just is a little bit easier for us and it's easier to upload work samples. You can link to different things, to YouTube, to Facebook clips, things like that. Um, but if we have artists who uh, don't have access to a computer or internet, if that's difficult, we also have a paper application. The paper application just gets a little trickier with work samples because then you have to like put songs on a CD or print out photos. And sometimes that can present other and different barriers. So just talk to us, let us know your situation, but we're confident we have a way to apply that should be easy for everyone. And uh, what does the application require? We ask for basic artist information, like your name, your address. Uh, we ask for you to describe your relationship to Marion and Morrow County. We ask for demographics. Um, it's optional if you wanna talk about your um, ethnicity, your race, your age, things like that, just to help us understand the artists that we're serving. Um, we ask for an artist statement, which is basically where each artist talks about the work that they create and why they do it and where they're going and what their uh, learning curve is. Uh, we ask for a residency vision, which is really, what do you wanna do for your residency? What's What new work are you gonna create? What's your art project? How does it connect to what we do here at Teradice? Um, and then residency purpose, which is kind of like, what is doing this residency going to do for you and your art making and your artist career? Why do you want this dedicated time to have some time out paid to work on your art? Um, then we ask for a short biography. We use that when we promote uh, the residencies of the artists we uh, choose. So we'll put that in our newsletter and use it to promote your event. Um, and then we ask for five work samples. Those, um, if you apply online, those can be uploaded or those can be linked. So if you have um, music, for example, on YouTube, or if you have a photograph or an image, you can link to that or you can upload it. And then we just ask for short titles or descriptions for each of those things so we know what we're looking at. New this year, we have a lot of um, innovations that hopefully make this a lot easier and less um, daunting for uh, someone who might not have applied for something like this before. Um, for these uh, narrative questions, like the artist statement, the residency vision and purpose, you can write them, but we also have the option of doing an audio or video recording. So you could write a up to a 500 word residency vision statement about what you wanna do during your residency, or you can record like a two or three minute video and, on your phone or an audio memo and, and upload that instead. So we've really tried to accommodate a wide range of artists, including people who might not feel comfortable writing and like want to just talk about it. It's a lot easier for a lot of us to just talk than to write. So we have a lot of options like that that we hope will encourage people who otherwise might feel intimidated and not want to apply um, to say, hey, this is easy. I can do this. I can record a short video. Uh, you can also save your application and come back to it later. So you don't have to do it all in one setting online. And we also have a PDF download of the application questions, which is really cool. So that artists who are applying can look at those questions in advance, prepare some responses. Um, Paper applications and flyers, we can get them to you. And they're also at most post offices in Marion County. We don't have them at the post office in Morrow County quite yet, but they should be up really soon within the week. And applications are due on February 1st, 11.59 p.m. Uh, online or postmarked by February 1st. And I'm almost done with this. Um, frequently asked questions. Is there an age limit? No. We are open to all artists and we especially are excited to work with younger artists and older artists um, who may not get the chance to do this sort of thing. A lot of the arts world is built around people who are between the ages of 20 and 40. And we really wanna give a chance to artists who are up and coming or who maybe came to arts later in their career or who are retired. We think all, of, uh, all, of, all people of all ages um, are incredible artists and have a lot of talent and we wanna nurture that. 
Uh, do you have to live in Ohio? Uh, this year we have a little bit more flexibility. Everyone we pick has to have a connection to Marion and Morrow County. But if you're from there, if your parents uh, or if you're an indigenous person and your ancestors are from this region, uh, tell us your story and we're happy to consider that. Um, what does it mean to be from Marion and Morrow County? That's also uh, deliberately left sort of open. Uh, for example, I myself didn't grow up in Marion County, but my dad's from Marion, my mom's from Caledonia. I grew up coming to Marion County all the time and I consider it my home uh, because my whole family besides my parents live here, even though I grew up a couple of counties over. And we also get a lot of questions about what makes for a good work sample. You only get five. So we really ask our artists to pick um, work samples that we really think show their best work, but also that are like related for uh, related to what they want to do in their residency. So if you're someone who's a photographer and a uh, ceramicist and you want to apply to do photographs at Teradice, then maybe showing us a lot of photos of the amazing bowls and pots that you make, that's great, but that might not give our selection committee the best chance to see your photography work. So we encourage artists to choose work samples that uh, reflect what you want to do in your residency. Then again, if you are a hip hop dancer and a quilter and you want to apply to a residency where you both do sewing work and dance work, then you probably want to show us some of both. So it's up to you. Um, like I said, uh, our artists can save their applications and come back to it later. And we have paper applications available. The coolest thing I think we are doing this year is we wrote into our grant and got support from Ohio Arts Council to offer technical assistance. That basically means I'm the coordinator of the program. I will help anyone who wants to apply within the limit of the hours that we're paid for to do it. Um, get your application in as perfect of shape as we can. I'm happy to help artists brainstorm how to approach the application, how to write questions. I'm happy to review drafts. I'm happy to listen to or look at work samples from artists and help them pick which might be the strongest for an application. We view this as a chance to help um, do professional development for artists in Marion and Morrow County and help get them ready for more artist residencies and more opportunities like this to be paid to make art. So um, we really wanna encourage um, you guys on the call and anyone listening on the internet leader, please take advantage of our time. We specifically wrote into our grant to be able to offer this technical assistance and these office hours to help um, with whatever questions you have. So please take us up on it. That said, um, we have limited hours, so it'll be first come first serve. So the artist that asks for our time first and say, hey Jess, can we get an hour on the phone? Can we do a Zoom? Can we meet you at Teradice and like look over some of this stuff and you can let us know? Absolutely, um, do it, but do it early. If someone asks me for an hour of technical support at 10 o'clock, on January 31st, that is going to be difficult. So um, just make sure you ask early and we are happy, happy, happy to help with whatever we can, including just like sitting with you on Zoom like this, looking at the screen. And if there's something confusing technologically about how the application works or whatever, we can work through that. Um, and just real quick, uh, before I take questions and then show you guys the website, um, these were the artists we had uh, in residence last year in 2022, and I just wanted to show them off to give an idea of the incredible diversity of artists we had. Um, in February, we had Michelle Montag and Josh Groves, both from Morrow County. Josh, who's pictured here, is, an, is a ceramicist and also does resin work. Uh, this is a beautiful resin and wood piece he made from uh, wood bark at Teradice. He's a uh, teacher, an art teacher at uh, Cardington, and Michelle Montag is a pencil artist. In March, 2022, we had Chelsea Dittman, who is an art teacher at Garfield Elementary actually. And she combined photography, embroidery work and haiku, which was pretty awesome. Jonathan Campbell uh, is a local fisherman. And uh, they did uh, an event at the end where Chelsea led us on a haiku walk. And Jonathan showed everyone how to tie uh, flies for fly fishing and did a demonstration of how to you know, cast, which we thought was pretty awesome. In April, we had Chris German, who is an electronic musician, and he recorded soundscapes, including some geese at Teradice, and then mixed them into uh, compositions that he layered with synthesizer and things like that. We had Deborah Jesse, who is a memoirist. So she worked on a memoir about her mom and her childhood in West Virginia, and wrote a children's book about flowers and led a plant walk, which was really cool. In May, we had LaCosta Mays, who's a musician who did an amazing performance for us. Uh, this was before we had our stage at the pond, so he did it in the parking lot, but it was beautiful. And we had Araby Sexton, who is an herbalist and actually showed everyone 
who was there how to make tinctures from a plant called cleavers, which is commonly found at Teradice. So that was awesome. And everyone had a fun takeaway. I'm giving you guys an idea too of how they work together for that final two hour public program. Um, in We made up a month last year because we had to squeeze people in in the warmer weather. So we had another set of artists from May 15th to June 15th. Um, so Miss Alberta Cress is a quilter and she presented a quilt and then talked to us about her journey as a sewing artist. Um, and then Tim Gorenflow from Prospect is an awesome painter and a pastel artist. So he gave a demonstration on how to do uh, plain air, open air pastel uh, drawings, which was really awesome. And finally in June, 2022, we had Steve and Christy Moore. They are a singer songwriter and a performance duo. They go by the name Full Moon. And um, they performed a set of original songs and broke our hearts by writing a song um, about Teradice and about Trella and Ray and their love story. It's like stuck in my head permanently. It is so good. You guys should listen to it. I, I could sing it, but I'd spare you my voice, but so beautiful. Um, we definitely all cried. And they gave a performance uh, in the house at the Romine residence, which was beautiful. And Michelle Berry um, is an amazing, uh, very young uh, in her early uh, 20s, I think, artist uh, who's at OSU in Columbus, but from Caledonia. And uh, she made a big canvas with Teradice's logo and everyone kind of uh, participatorially painted on the canvas together. And we got to keep that at Teradice. So those are our artists from last year and uh, gives you a sense of the events uh, we worked on. And our artists are not thrown into this. We will work with you a um, couple of weeks out uh, to plan what this event is. We'll do all the promotion, take care of all of that. You just have to come up with some ideas from what you want to do. Um, so last but not least, before we take questions and look at the website and application, we have one more info session coming up on December 18th. We wanted to get these in before the holidays. Hanukkah starts uh, really soon on the 18th and then Christmas is after that and Kwanzaa. So we wanted to make sure that before everyone's with their family and eating a bunch of food and all of that, you know what you need to know about this residency because February is going to come fast. Um, and we do have two uh, scheduled technical assistance office hours already set up in January, one on Sunday the 8th uh, in the afternoon. That's like three or four hours, actually. And then I've blocked off a couple of hours on Tuesday the 17th. So I'll just be here on Zoom hanging out. First come, first served. Whoever wants to come can ask questions. But any time between now and then, with the exception of, you know, holidays, things like that, we'll work with our schedules. Um, I'm available by phone, Zoom, or in person to talk through ideas with potential applicants and artists, um, listen to or look at your work and help you decide on work samples. Uh, if you want to have a draft application, I'm happy to review it. You also totally don't have to. If you're like, I'm just going to do this and apply, don't worry about it. But if anything's confusing or you need help, that is what we're here for. And it's part of our grant this year. And uh, finally, these are the addresses to know. If you go to teradice.org slash arts residency, that is how you find uh, all the information about the residency. And there's a big button there that says apply now. That is how you get to our application. Or if you want to go there directly, teradice.org slash tear 2023 application. And um, I'll have these slides available on our website as well. But again, I'm Jess. I coordinate the program. It's so much fun. Love getting to work with artists and support you guys. Um, you can reach me at Teradice Nature Center at gmail.com. You can just put TARE 2023 or arts residency, something like that in the subject line. Uh, so I'll know to check that email. Um, and there is our website. I'm going to stop sharing for now and um, would love to uh, quickly, if it's okay, just do a walkthrough of um, our website so you guys can see it. And then I will stop recording and can answer specific questions. Does that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. And thank you guys for being patient with all of our, uh, you know, technology. I've done Zoom for years now, but every time it's <laughs> something new, which is why we're attentive to trying to make sure uh, things uh, are accessible technologically, because we know it can be overwhelming. So I'm just going to walk through for you guys and anyone watching online how to find our applications. We go to teradice.org. That is our main Teradice website. And you navigate up here to TNC programs and right at the top, Teradice Environmental Arts Residency. You click on that, my internet's slow too. <laughs> this is our splash page. So this is the first place you'll land. Um, and it's just a lot of the stuff I presented on in this presentation. Talks about our residency. There's Trella and Ray. Um, probably this was in 1953 or so, um, beautiful. Uh, full color, that's from some slide photos uh, that they took in their family. 
but there's basic information about the residency. We're taking aid artists, information about our info sessions and the deadline. And you click apply now, and that'll take you to the application. There's also more details. This is the stuff I went over if you wanna review it about, we take all artists, we're excited for artists from backgrounds that haven't been served by residencies a lot in the past, what you have to do in terms of visiting Teradice and making new work, our stipend, et cetera. Um, this lists when the other information sessions and office hours are, including the one today, Sunday, and in January. And then information about Teradice and a little bit more about the residency and our funder, the Ohio Arts Council. So um, if you click here too, we also have some downloads on the website. This uh, link here will take you to our one-page flyer that just uh, tells a little bit about our residency program. We have these at every post office in Marion and Morrow County, unless someone tore them down, um, except for Fulton, that post office was closed. It's always closed. It's only open 12 to four, um, only part of the week. So we don't have any flyers there yet, but we're working on Fulton. But you can download that flyer if you know someone else who'd like to be a part of this, um, please print that off, uh, send them, email them a copy of that. But I'm just gonna walk you guys through now what happens when you press the green button. That takes you to our application page. And there's a couple of tabs here. If you see the river, you're in the right place. That's our application. And the way this works is there's different tabs. There's the leaf tab that tells you about Teradice. If you wanna remember uh, what we do and you can click through to the next tab or just go up here. About this residency is basically the stuff I put in this presentation. It tells you what our arts residency is, what you have to do, what months we're picking artists, uh, et cetera. And you can download the flyer again. Application help, again, is that stuff we went over about these information sessions and when we will be hosting office hours. This is also where you can find uh, the Zoom link to those uh, sessions. It's all the same ID and link and password as today. We're just gonna do that to keep it easy for people. But if you wanna come to another meeting or get more help, you can do that. And you can also just email us, teradicenaturecenter at gmail.com and set up time with me. Uh, that's what I'm here for. And that's what my job is to help support artists. And um, then we have an FAQ section. I won't read through all of this tonight because we're trying to keep this under an hour uh, and it is almost 740, uh, but we do have frequently asked questions. So if you have questions you think might be on here, you can check. We went over a lot of them in the presentation, but I don't live in Marion or Morrow. Can I still apply? Is there an age limit? No, there's not an age limit. If you have a disability and you need help um, being accommodated and getting access to Teradice, we're happy to work with you on that. Um, if you want to apply as a band or a collective, totally okay. We'd love for you to do that. We talk about how um, we have options for uploading video and audio. Um, if you don't, uh, if you speak another language or another set of languages besides English, uh, we have options to translate the application. Um, and there's a lot of other information here um, about work samples, et cetera. So that's always good to check. And then this last tab, PDFs, that is where you can download um, a preview of our application. The way the application works, we'll go over it in a second, but you have to go through section one and then click through to section two. You can't see section two first. So we highly recommend that everyone who wants to apply download either the info packet and questions or just the questions. It's a pretty big document. It's like 30 pages. Don't let it scare you. It's just all the stuff from the website and a PDF, but tells you about our residency, et cetera. And then if you skip down here to page 13, you can see the questions we ask in the actual application, which is like a web form. But this way you can look at it and write out some of this stuff in advance. Don't like, you're gonna have to type it in. So we recommend you do it in Google Docs or Microsoft Word pages, whatever you use. Um, but here's the basic stuff. You know, we ask what months artists are available. We ask for different things, gender, race, ethnicity. Um, if you wanna talk about that, if you need help, um, with a disability or a language issue, uh, we can help you with that. And you tell us what genre your work is in, or it can be multiple genres. If you wanna check all of these, if you do all of these things, that's awesome. Um, and then the main questions here, like we said, um, artist statement. We ask artists to provide an artist statement in no more than 250 words. Um, it should briefly address what kind of art do you make and why what kind of art has most influenced your practice? What are your goals as an artist? Who is your work for? Who's your audience? Why are you doing this? Um, and what do you want to learn? What's next for you as an artist? And you can either type that in 250 words or less, or like we said, uh, you can just record a short video or audio of yourself and upload that. We don't 
necessarily, we're not expecting like music or comic books or any fancy art here. It really is just a chance for people to talk. So we encourage artists to just make simple videos and audio here and then save your art for later. So you don't have to write a poem for this section or record a song about your artist statement. Uh, you can give your work samples later. And then our two main questions, um, our vision question is, what do you hope to make and do during your residency at Teradice? So you can share about what projects you want to make. Um, so I know we have an amazing songwriter on the call. So you could say, hey, I really want to write one original song and I want it to be inspired by the outdoors and the Whetstone River somehow. So that's a great project, right? And you can just talk a little bit about how your idea is going to connect to what we do at Teradice. That could be our history. Like if you want to write about Trella and Ray and their lives or the prairies, um, our mission, something about the environment, um, the river, or just be inspired by our property and write whatever comes to you from visiting our trails and sitting by the river. All of that is fine. And then we'd also like our artists to talk a little bit about this final event. What are you going to do? Would you like to do a performance? Would you like to do a workshop? Just give us some ideas. No pressure, but this helps our selection committee know what you'd want to do. And again, you can write this up to 500 words or you can record a short video. Uh, we ask people to keep it pretty short, like two to three minutes, just because we have a selection committee that's gonna be looking through all of these. And if we get 40 or 50 applicants, that's a lot of different videos to watch and remember. Um, and then our final question is the purpose. We really just wanna hear from our artists. Um, why do you wanna be an artist in residence with Teradice? We said, uh, what has called you to this work? And why is this residency right for you at this moment? So we wanna hear from our artists uh, what their connection is to the natural world, to being outdoors, whatever your story is, what's that like? Maybe we have artists that have never gotten to spend time outdoors and this is new for them. Maybe they grew up hunting and fishing and out in the woods and going to parks and camping and they're so comfortable outdoors and they would love to make art inspired by that. Um, we'd love to hear a little bit about um, the connection the artist has to woods, rivers, prairies, anything outdoors in Marion and Morrow County, anything you'd like to learn about Teradice or our property and how this residency matters for you personally or professionally. Uh, where is this gonna get you as an artist? Um, and again, you can write that or you can record it, audio or video. And finally, we have a question here that's pretty simple. It's just a biography. We want you to write up to 250 words just about who you are as an artist, where'd you grow up? What's your connection to Mary Ann and Morrow County? How did you get into the type of art that you do? Why did you start practicing it? How did you learn? Um, and what are some highlights of your career as an artist so far? And for this one, we do ask you to write it out just because we're going to copy and paste it into our newsletter and use it to help market uh, your work and the event that you do. So uh, that one you can't record and upload, but everything else you can. Then if you have any supplies or materials you think you want, we are not sure yet, but we may have a small budget uh, to reimburse up to $100 of materials. Stay tuned. And then here's the important part, work samples. So again, we ask for five work samples. They can be um, in any of these formats, images, PNG, GIF, JPEG, video can be MP3, MP4, movie, audio, etc. And you can also link to things online. Uh, the only thing we ask is if you link to things online, like Instagram or Facebook, make sure it's like a specific video that everyone can see. Cause a lot of our applicants, they come from different backgrounds. I myself am not on Facebook or Instagram and uh, the things Facebook owns, it makes it really hard to see if you're not on Facebook, including Instagram. So uh, we just ask you to like link directly to work um, in some of those formats. If you don't have uh, access to links or you don't have downloadable things, we can work with you and help you figure out how to get those things off of Facebook, download them, upload them. That's what the technical help is for. So we accept any combination of five links or uploads. And then we just ask you to give each thing a title and a brief description and that's it. And we'll break for questions in about one minute, but I just wanna show you guys what the actual application looks like. So you'll, you'll use that packet to prepare. Again, you could take this prompt and then write your response in Google Docs, in a Word document, whatever. But you're actually gonna apply unless you wanna do the paper application, which you can download here. Uh, but we don't really, we only recommend that for artists who really don't have computer or internet access at all and who aren't comfortable with it because it is harder um, to get us work samples if you don't use the internet form. But we'll work with you if you want to do it. But click on the pen and here's what it looks like. So I'm just going to fill this out as a work sample, right? Just to show you guys. But 
So I'm John Lennon and this is, you know, the 1970s. So I'm not with the Beatles anymore. So I'm not going to fill out any of the other stuff. No, no Beatles. There's no other artists. I'm going to give my name, right? And I'm just going to uh, John at nobeatles.com, right? I'm going to just give a phone number. You know, this is just random, but I'm going to say I live at, you know, John Lennon's house. Forgive me, I'm doing this live, you know. I think he lived in New York. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess he's gonna live in New Hampshire now. Um, I don't know the zip code in New York, right? Um, he's gonna talk about his relationship to Marion County. Um, seems nice. That should be it, it should be like a, a paragraph, couple sentences, but just for the purposes here. So that's what I mean that you can't see each section. You got to do it one at a time. So that's why we ask our applicants to use the PDF and look at the questions first. But you'll go through this section, say next, or you can say save and continue later. If you do this, it'll send you a link and you can do it later. But you click next and then it opens up. Oh, there was a problem. Oh, I got to change that. Apparently it wants me to put names for all the artists. So good to know. We learned something about our form. It's a little bit broken. Uh, that's why we do this. All right. So, um, oh no, they have to have a middle and a last name. <laughs> I'll fix that tonight. So for anyone watching after today, this won't be an issue anymore, but apparently we made every, everyone has to have a band. If you don't have a band, you can't apply. There has to be at least four people. Um, so you better find bandmates quick. Um, and then this screen is really simple. You just pick your availability. So whatever works for your schedule. Um, we've got uh, someone on the call. I know who is a student. So say uh, it's easiest for the student to do it in June because school gets out, say their school gets out at the beginning of June, they could say June. If it's someone who's really flexible, they can do all of them. If it's someone who's traveling to um, uh, California in May for a big trip, maybe they are available in March and April and June, but not in May, whatever works for you guys. Or if you're flexible and you just really wanna be picked for whatever, you can select all of them. And you can say anything here. You could say, you know, I'm going camping June 15th, the 30th, whatever you want to put there. That just helps. That doesn't influence your selection. We pick artists and then we worry about scheduling. We probably should do it the other way around, but to be fair, um, but yeah, you can just put whatever you need there and then you can pick things. If you want to pick gender, you don't have to pick that. You can pick race and ethnicity. You don't have to, I'll just say other, other for now age. I'm going to be, I don't know how old John Lennon would be. I'm going to say he'd be 90. And John Lennon's gonna identify as an elder artist. So you pick age and a category if that applies to you. Then you can describe your uh, identity if you want to. You can say, you know, I'm John Lennon and I'm 90 and I'm coming out of retirement to write a new album. Um, again, so whatever you would like to write here, if you have a disability and you need accommodations, like, um, uh, for example, if you are a deaf artist and you would like uh, to have an ASL, American Sign Language interpreter, uh, to help your programs be more accessible uh, to your community, we can work with you and try to make any of that happen. So that's this next section. Uh, section five is just where you tell us what your genre is. So if I'm John Lennon, uh, we're going to go with uh, music and songwriting. And uh, this is where you put your artist statement up to 250 words. And so you can either write it here, right? Or this box here is where you can drag and drop an audio file. So what I would do if I wanted to do audio is I just record a quick video on my phone, uh, airdrop it or get it on my computer somehow. You can email it to yourself, whatever works. And then you just drag that here and you're done. You don't have to put something in that box here for artist statement because you've already done it down here. Click next. And these are the next big questions that we talked through, right? The vision. Um, and it kind of looks ugly here. We didn't have the ability to do bullet points, but again, what do you want to do during your residency? You're going to write that here, or you can drag and drop your audio and video, just like with the artist statement. Again, we try to make it really easy. You could just make three short videos, two minutes each. You're done with the application, except for clicking some boxes. And then down here, the purpose, how's this residency going to change your life? What's it going to do for you? You write that here, or you can drag a file in and then your short biography, right? I'm John Lennon. Again, this should be a little bit more substantial. This is just for demonstration purposes, but write a little bit about your bio, up to 250 words, highlights of your career, and any supply. You know, John Lennon needs a guitar. Okay, so next, 
And that takes us to the next section. And this is the last section. It's pretty easy. Um, if you have a web page, you can link to it. I mean, maybe we'll say johnlennon.com. I think that exists. Um, and you can either drag up to five files right into this box here where it says work sample, and then you can describe it. So I say one, um, you know, this is my song, Imagine, blah, blah, blah. You describe each of the pieces. Or if you want, um, instead of dragging things, you can link to things. So John Lennon here could say, Imagine, my song, Imagine, and then you put a link to it. I'm making this up, youtube.com slash imagine. Uh, good song, you know? And then if you wanna add another link, you can add the other one below here. Uh, so that is all you do. And then you also have to prove you're not a robot, which is pretty simple. Um, I got to delete this from our inbox because it's going to be pretty crazy. But then you press submit and your application is in. So there you go. We just applied for the residency. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. Thank you for everyone on the call um, for being along for the ride and then um, answer a few questions for folks watching this online. Um, there is another info session uh, this coming Sunday, December 18th at noon. We'll go over some of the same stuff. Hopefully the form will be a little fixed by then and you don't have to have a band. Um, but hopefully this is helpful for anyone trying to apply online. So I'm going to, if I can figure out how, 